Welcome back to Sunrise Daily World, uh, continuing our focus on uh, the plights of the IDPs and uh, getting across to other Nigerians who are also going in there to ensure that um, they have a better life in those camps. And uh, now we're joined by Mudukwe Ozolua, who is a social entrepreneur, also uh, visiting some of those camps. Let's find out, Mudukwe. Thank you for joining us today. What have you seen in some of the camps that you've visited? Oh, thank you for having me. Well, um, as you do know, there's so many different camps hosting different um, IDPs due to different types of attacks. Our organization, in Pakistan, for focuses on IDPs uh, displaced due to insurgency. So the program we have for them, which is Rise Above Terror, is centered in um, northeast Nigeria. It's. Um, I will have to say that the, the Nigerian government the different agencies that have been involved have a huge task on their hands, not just their hands, our hands, because it's not as simple as people think it is to manage those camps. There's so many issues on the ground, so many um, technical and financial obligations involved. Um, it's, uh, they've done a great job, in my opinion, in the sense that they have several services already on ground in addition to providing temporary accommodation, because we do have to remember that this camps are temporary. You can't expect it to be a five-star hotel. Um, you have thousands of people in each camp, meaning you have to feed them all day. Then, so you can imagine the financial application and the implications of that. And in addition, you also have um, temporary hospital or clinics set up already in these camps. So the state government that uh, set up, the, the state aspect of NEMA and also the federal government, uh, NEMA and other, uh, to other agencies, have taken on financial responsibility of providing medical care to IDPs in those camps. So they do have medical care. Um, those that have severe medical conditions that cannot be treated within the camps are taken to the government hospitals and the state government takes care of the financial responsibility of taking care of them. So they have done quite a bit. But I have observed that everything other organizations are doing is, in reality, relief. Overlooking or ignoring the fact that at some point these people have to go home. Proper rehabilitation, in our opinion, is not being done, so that's what we do. We don't focus on giving them food and mattresses and buckets because everybody is doing that. What we focus on is empowering the women so they become self-sufficient. Uh, how we do that is based on the skills they have. So, because they have very limited skills because they come from very rural areas. So those are the tailors, those are the farmers, those that make local um, granite oil processing and things like that. We give them the machinery. We don't give them money. We, those are tailors, we buy sewing machines, we give them. Those that are farmers, we give them fertilizers and seedlings based on the crops they used to grow. We give them all these tools. So you have these women that are already within the camps that are IDPs, but they have started trading and doing business. All right, so uh, how were they able to overcome the psychology or the trauma that they must have gone through and then switch on to taking on what you've given and am I working with them? Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, I was asking, how were they able to cope getting over the trauma that they must have been through and then focusing on ensuring that they empower themselves? The easiest way to get over any type of trauma is knowing that there's hope. When you have hope, you will overcome whatever it is. You cannot, anybody, you and I, or you or I, anybody, cannot get over a situation if you, the future looks bleak. But when they see they have means that they can regain their dignity, not sitting down waiting for people to come give them handouts. Because another thing you need to realize, people have this misconception that every IDP uh, displaced due to insurgency was some poor illiterate. And that is not the case. You have many people that are doctors, many of them businessmen, businesswomen that had pharmacies. They had their own different enterprises, large farms. They had a life. And even though they had little, but they had their own dignity. So it's very traumatic when you have such situations that you just sit there, they're sitting on the ground, some of them are sleeping on the bare ground. If you don't give them food to eat, they have no food to eat. There's no way they're going to get past that. But when they see there's a, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that is encouraging. That's enough for anybody to pick him or herself up 
And with the children, because you have the thousands of children, millions of them, you're just hanging around the place. So what we also do is, as we support the women through means of um, self-empowerment, so they can feed themselves and their kids, the children, we set up schools within the camps because it is so important that these kids have to be engaged because just as your colleague said a few minutes ago, if these children are not addressed, they are the easiest targets to be recruited into terrorism and they are the easiest people tomorrow will uprise and attack everybody because they feel definitely feel they've been abandoned by you and I, not just the government because we are the government. Okay. Besides so we set up schools within the camps and we started with building schools in communities because a big problem is this. Everybody is focusing on camps, camps, camps. They're going to go back home. And not just already have people in those villages. Those villages are not abandoned. Mm -hmm. So you have even outside the camps, you have thousands, millions of children literally you know, all over the street because all the way from um, beyond the uh, Geria, which is a community in uh, Yola State, all the way from all the way to Meduguri or Bornu State, all the schools are destroyed by Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. You don't have a standing school. So I, I don't know, did, did you follow? We're rebuilding schools and things like that, so people can be engaged positively, and they can be faster. Okay, then, did, did you follow the debate uh, of, of rebuilding on the floor of the Senate, and uh, what were your conclusions? Because one of the debates, or one aspect of the debate, was that they cannot start rebuilding in an area where the war is still going on. Do you think that that's... Uh, that is not quite true. I mean, can they start rebuilding now that uh, at least they've been able to calm the area somewhat? I, I believe that's inaccurate. They can start rebuilding because I can assure you right now we've almost finished a school, rebuilding a school in a place called Uba Adamawa State. I go there all the time. I myself personally, I'm on the field. I just don't sit as the founder of an organization in my office. I'm in Mendukuri all the time. I'm in Kiri. I'm in Lhasa. I'm in Minchika. So if I can go, why can't they go and rebuild? We are rebuilding, so I don't know what they're talking about. Some places, of course, are not safe, no doubt about that. But a lot of those places are safe. And like I said a few minutes ago, those villages are not empty. There are people living there. There are people trying to rebuild their lives. And I don't know, you know, there's, 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 most likely, um, I'm trying to be very special with my chair, of course, yeah. Um, but certainly a lot of facts are not being told, some facts. And the one thing people should realize that a lot of these IDPs in the camps in the Northeast states are sick and tired of being in the camps. A lot of them have been living in the camps on their own accord and going to their homes because they are tired of receiving handouts. They want to rebuild their dignity. They want to be able to fend for themselves. So why shouldn't they be encouraged? They can rebuild. We're not talking about going. I mean, even for example, for example, some critical connecting bridges in Adamawa born new states, even in Yobe, have been blown up by the program. The first time I went to those um, areas, that was uh, about uh, March this year, of course it wasn't the raining season, but you could drive on the dry riverbed and go across. But the last time I was there was a couple of months ago, so you could not even go across. Connectivity, accessibility to those areas have been completely compromised because the rain, and so the, 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 the bed, the river beds have been flooded. Cars cannot go through. Even if it comes, it's now a major security issue, not just for the people that reside in those villages, because Boko Haram is still attacking some of the outlets, or rather villages in those areas. But the attacks are very few and far in between because there's a strong presence of the Nigerian army there. Even the Nigerian army cannot easily transport their own supplies to their own men on the ground because they cannot access the places at the morning. Because it's a rainy season, the bridges are broken. The people that the villages there cannot even run for security if they have to. So nobody should be saying, oh, they cannot rebuild. That is very incorrect. They can rebuild. The issue is you know, determining what should be rebuilt now. They should identify the critical things such as bridges because our Nigerian army need to be able to access those areas to help people because tomorrow we'll say they are not helping. When they can't get across, who's going to do that? So the government has to give them funds to fill, you know, uh, to those bridges. The schools, people are living in those areas, millions of people. They need to rebuild the schools so these children can be going to school. Okay. And Ma then everybody else can come along. But if I come in here, the other thing that a lot of people talk about, and which is out there in the, in the public sphere, is the conditions within the camps. Um, yes. There have been uh, reports of rapes uh, and pregnancies and all of that. But what's being done to not just give them shelter, but also give them some level of um, emotional sh shelter and comfort as well? It's how much more 
emotional comfort can you give someone when every day they're faced with the fact that they've lost everything they have? But what are you going to say to them? What are you going to give them? Till they to be people that don't believe their husbands or their wives or their kids that they don't like. What are you going to say to them? People that were able to stay in one or they had a little hut or they had their mansions or whatever it was, and it was just them and their kids in the room or in the house. Now you have a room with about a hundred, a small room with a hundred women sleeping in one room with their kids. What are you going to say? That's easier said than done. Let's be very realistic about it. It's very easier said than done. The most, the most every donor or any donor agency can do, the most the Nigerian government can do is to give them the basics, which is shelter, temporary shelter, and feeding. And then you have different states that have definitely come on board to make sure that even at the camps they're teaching their kids, like in Borno State. The Borno State government has made sure that they, those kids are being taught. Some of the other states are not doing that. So we set up camps, uh, we set up schools within those camps. So the children are engaged. We give them school uniforms, we give them shoes, books, writing materials. Even this company, Onward um, Paper Mail, a few days ago, has gone into an agreement with us. They have designed and printed notebooks, which we're going to be giving to these kids in the camps. We even hire teachers to teach these children. We pay them a pay rate or salary. You can only do so much. Now, with, with what we saw a report of some children that were angry when they were, they were, they were being attempted, there were attempts to move them from the camps where they were in a dull state. Now, there's a tendency that some of these children might come out angry at society. What kind of conversations would we be having with them now just so that to help to stop that anger? You know, they do IDP, IDPs as though they're not even humans, as though they're subhumans. They need to be encouraged as the for the children, the most you can do, because what we do anyway, is when we go to the camp, we play with the kids, they're very happy, we give them toys. They feel appreciated as they do count. And the most we kids, kids are easy. You know, you show them love, they will love you. And the most you can do where the camps are concerned is you set up schools with them. So they're happy, they're going to school every day, they're reading, they see people love them. What are they going to do? So how are you getting support? I mean, I was going to ask Alyssa uh, Mecca as well, because all of this takes a lot of time and yes. energy. How are you getting supported yourself? We have some good um, donors that have individuals corporate um, bodies that are supporting us, and also my different businesses, uh, I, I find them. So would you welcome Nigerians to come up with items, whatever, to uh, perhaps forward to Absolutely. the camps? Absolutely, because it's, it's very capital intensive, extremely capital intensive. And um, so we need all the financial and material support we can get, because look at Onward uh, Paper Mail, they give us books. Okay. It doesn't have to be cash, that's great. And uh, I think, uh, my, not I think, what I, what I know is that, a, a, you know, I know not everybody can go to the places we go to, because even when I tell it shows where we are, they scream, they're like, oh my God, are you crazy? But we need to go to those places. We need to impact right. the okay? Even to the point we even take cement, we take bags of cement, we take roofing tents to our uh, sheets, to as far as Minchika, to give people to start rebuilding their homes, because some of them are sleeping on the trees outside in the rainy season. All right, wait, wait, wait. So, all right. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mudupo Ozola, and uh, well done for your efforts. Thank you. All right. And so you. there you go. And uh, you can support all of them, the many of them out there. So whatever information will always pass across. But we've got one more to focus on, and that will be in just a moment. Join us again.